Secular Sakai is asking, could you please do a review video on traditional Chinese folk religion, not just Taoism and Confucianism, but the whole gambit of supernatural belief. Taoism. Taoism. I think that. Yeah. I know, I just yeah. messed it up. Yeah. It seems it's like a, a very large and influential religion that is often overlooked outside of China, despite illegal industries being centered around it, like international poaching of exotic animals for medicinal ingredients um, on superstitious grounds. It also seems to strongly encourage traditional Chinese medicine as a practice. Wait, it got cut off. Um, as a practice... No, as a preferred pseudoscientific alternative to modern medicine. What are your thoughts? Okay, I don't think that the Chinese medicine part is re re connected to the Taoism and Confucianism. We well, have done videos. There's aspects to it, definitely, because it all has to do with your chi and different energies and balancing different energies and the effects of things in your environment on your chi. My understanding was that they, they exist... Um, separate from each other and any connections be made between them is just like just because they happen side by side people connect things together no matter what they do right um i don't think i mean i i there's nothing okay maybe i'm wrong but uh gage in american maybe you're in live chat let us know there's nothing i mean maybe in confucianism but there's nothing specifically in taoism that c tells you about I mean, Taoism is responsible for, I guess, like, chi stuff. But I don't think, I think, like, this is just, because, like, okay, for example, in Islamic countries, there's a, lo a lot of, for example, traditional stuff about um, this herbs do this, and this do does that, and if you drink this before midnight and do say this, you know, like, there's it will do that, you know what I mean? But... They're rooted in that geographic area that are, and it's not about anything, it has nothing to do with Islam. You know what I mean? I mean, there might be one or two things. There, actually, there are some stuff in as in Hadith that promotes some form of like alternative medicine, right? Mambo Jumbo. But the vast majority of the alternative medicine that is in the in Islamic areas, for example, um, is not rooted in ha in anything in any like Islamic scripture or anything like that, right? It's just everywhere has that, you know what I mean? Um, maybe the connection was made later, like right? for example, what eventually became Islamic medicine was a mix was something that just the traditions around that area was just somehow eventually later somehow connected to Islam, even though the source was not either the Hadith or the um Quran. Um, Asian American is saying that they've been connected for four thousand years. At this point. Okay, so they're not this they don't have the same source, but because I guess once they they have been so they li been living they've been connected with each other for, for for such a long time that they will become part of each other. Yeah, I guess so yeah, so I'm wrong about that again, I guess. Like sometimes it could be like it's similar to when, when people say, like, in Hinduism, like, well, this was not originally in the Vedas. Well, and we were like, yeah, but it's been, like, I don't know, 2,000 years or this many thousands of years since this is part of the Hindu tradition. So at one point, are you going to now call it Hinduism, right? So I guess, yeah, that's a fair point. So even if it didn't come from it, it's it's been so ingrained with each other that it's part of it now. So, yeah, I guess, I guess that's... A, I just don't think that's the first thing you think about when you think about Confucianism and Taoism. But yeah, um, yeah, I don't know. What do you think? Um, well, my understanding at this point in life is that traditional Chinese medicine or TCM is just BS. Um, yes. Well, so is Confucianism and, and Taoism. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but there's a lot of TCM practices that are repackaged and sold in wellness industries as something legitimate. Um, in fact, like in my area, like you can get insurance to pay for your acupuncture, um, which is very wild. Uh, but what in, in terms of doing a review video, you know who we should talk to? We should talk to Gaijin American.
because Gage yes. American did that really good episode with you on your personal channel about Japanese mythology and the ways really of the kami. That was so much fun. And that, that was, was so much and fun. I was just so blown away by like how knowledgeable he was. So yeah. I feel like if we had him, we could do a much better video yeah. than just on our own. Um. Okay, so we could. I mean. The thing is that I think like if we want to talk about tr uh, traditional Chinese medicine and the harms of alternative medicine, well, that would I have think to be like, separate. yeah, I think that would have to be separate because trying to talk about the, the connection between that and Confucianism and Taoism will some, you know, would be, I don't know, like, okay, so here's a more, like if I'm talking about Confucianism right now, especially the more harmful or not just harmful but the more immediate effect of confucianism that i think we should be concerned about today is the way that it's being used by the ccp okay uh, as a way to use something historical and cultural uh, as cover for exporting ccp propaganda around the world right um and also as a way to use because okay the communists you know the ccp is supposed to be communist and initially with mao and everybody they were extremely anti anything traditional including religion and confucianism and, and i say and confucianism because there's a debate whether or not confucianism is a religion i'm not going to get into semantics right now whatever it is right but they were against traditional things including confucianism right um but now they're doing they're rethinking about that because they've seen the power of religion um and the fact that it could be if the, whoever wields that power will be able to exert a lot of control and influence on people, right? And that's exactly why the CCP is so much against letting Christianity or Islam or Falun Gong or anything else just become this its own powerful force that gets to have an influence on people. They want to make sure if there is Christianity or Islam, it's a CCP approved version of it and that the CPP has a tight control over it. But they're also looking at Confucianism as something that might they might reintroduce to society, but under their control and under their influence as a way to not just provide something to people that um, as a, as a, because they're like, the CCP is like, not doesn't give a crap about communism anymore, right? What they care about is control. And Confucianism would be a very effective way at promoting the Chinese brand, right? And something that is very, very Chinese, right? And making sure that they, if they could release that back on, on, on the world and on their own people, but make sure that it's something that they have control over, that would be something that they'd be very much into, right? So you, see, you have seen a resurface of government approved versions of Confucianism, right? It, this is something that Mao would be like, what the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> like, this is not the, this is not what we were, <laughs> this is not what the, this whole uh, project was about. But yeah, that would be something very interesting to look into. Um, but by the way, um, anything else that like Taoism or I don't know, like other religions people refer to that people think like is harm harmless, they are some of the most harmful ones, right? Like people will talk about Taoism because I don't know, like people, they watch people do Tai Chi and do some like, oh, like they're just talking about like flow of energy and this woo stuff in nature and stuff like this is not, not harmful or they refer to Jainism. Um, th this is, these are as a, as a harmless religion, as a tolerant religion, these are actually extremely dangerous ideologies, right? They're basically gateway drugs to bullshit, right? They make bullshit seem um, acceptable. Um, so because they're harmless right so they because of the the emotional appeal that they have and because they are not like attacking anybody right you think like okay well then it's harmless not not understanding that's the most important standard that you have to have uh, is looking for evidence looking for logical arguments and you know not harming anybody 
is not the only standard you should have. And once they once you once you drop that filter and once you drop that guard and accept these other bullshit ideologies and methodologies, and then you're opening yourself up to all sorts of other like you're in, you're opening an entire generation of people into the world of uh, woo fuckery, right? So there's that. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.